The One Mike with Big Mike show starts in five minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The One Mic with Big Mike show starts in four minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in three minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in two minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in one minute. with Big Mike show starts in 30 seconds. The One Mike with Big Mike show starts in 5, 4, Three, two. 
One mic. One mic. I'm back. It's the One Mic with Big Mike show. Live. There ain't no goddamn take. Interactive and on demand. One, <laughs> one mic. mic. Yeah, a sports show. The best move of LeBron's career, man, was dragging his sweaty ball sack right across Draymond Green's the nip. The nape of his neck and getting that dude suspended and so much more. What's going on right now with Donald Trump? This is America. And it just it, it tickles me to death when I when white people are so shocked and appalled by it. What? It's the one mic with Big Mike show. Of course, it's like anything, like ammonia or you sniffing glue is gonna get you high. You've been warned. The one mic with Big Mike show start now. Here he is. He's real cocky, he's real loud mouth, he's real flamboyant. He don't he don't cow down to people. Big, Big Mike. 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 Yep, you know what that means, man. The air horn means it is the end of the week. We made it to the end of another week here on the One Mic with Big Mike Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm here, man, live via Spreaker.com. Also, I'm here on the Spreaker app. If you guys go, go to your uh, app store, you can download that for all your mobile devices. I'm also on the TuneIn app, live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting at 7 o'clock. You can also check the show out, usually on my Facebook page. Uh, my Facebook live stream is down tonight. Uh, but no worries, I'll try to get it back up for the Monday show. Uh, still, check check the page out, at One Mike with Big Mike. Same handle for my Twitter and my Instagram. Uh, like the page, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, tonight, Friday, is Freestyle Friday here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. Meaning, what Freestyle Friday is, it means like whatever you're saying, I'm playing basically. If you want to talk about something, whether it be in the area of sports, whether it be in the area of politics, social issues, a lot of times these things kind of, you know, overlap and fall into the laps of one another. We can talk about it, man. Just hit me up in a couple of different ways, either uh, at 404-902-8104. Text me at that number, 404-902-8104. You can also hit me on uh, social media. Or the preferable way would be if you're listening to me right now on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app, you'll see a little thought bubble icon on the streaming player. Just click on that. It'll get you into, inside my live interactive chat room. That way we'll be able to have more of a, a back and forth type of situation going on. Um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff to talk about today. If you guys don't give me give me anything, I got you. Um, oh, before I get into all that, let me make sure I give you guys the, the rundown on all the, the ancillary things. Uh, bottom of the hour, I'll take you guys back in time and give you guys a uh, little history lesson with my segment on this day where I give you some tidbits and factoids on some historical things that happened on this particular day in sports history. Uh, I also got a new segment, and I don't remember if I did it on on Wednesday. My memory ain't as good as it used to be, but I, I think I may have done it. But either way, it's back tonight. It's called what? Yeah, simply uh, it's audio that I've heard through the day. You guys can participate, too. You guys hear some audio. That sounds weird or stupid or just funny to you. Just hit me up, man. Uh, email me at uh, one mic with big mike at gmail.com. This time it's O N E M I C W I T H B I G M I K E at gmail.com. Or just, you know, hit me on Twitter and Instagram or whatever. Tell me what it is. I'll try to find it at one mic this time with the number one mic with big mike.com. So I'll play uh, some sound tonight that I thought was funny in my new segment, my three. Uh, episode old segment what also bottom of the hour got a big announcement for everybody well big for me but i'm gonna share it with you guys because i feel like i have to um as opposed uh well in regards to everything else we got a lot of stuff to talk about we got to talk about lebron we got to talk about uh some stuff going on in the nba uh the nfl excuse me big 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 day tomorrow we're actually starting today we got stanford and uh uc usc today for the Pac-12 championship, but we have some uh, the, the the bigger, more important, as it stands, uh, championship games tomorrow. Uh, a lot of stuff going on with, with these coaches in, in the NCAA. Uh, Ole Miss, yeah, I, they they pretty much got theirs finally today. <laughs> I mean, the clock was ticking on that thing, and I'll kind of give you guys the details on that as well. Uh, Derek Jeter, the biracial angel. He might be going to hell. If if hell was a real place, Derek Jeter might actually find himself there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about it coming up uh, in a little bit. Um, but I want to start here. I want to start with something that I just briefly mentioned on, on Wednesday. And it's kind of, you know, through some reporting, it's kind of going to some to some different places. Um, there's some people here on, on Facebook that are reacting to it. And, and the it that I'm speaking of is, 
um, the Players Coalition. For those of you who don't know who that what that is, the Players Coalition. I, I, from these are my words. Uh, I guess it's the group that kind of took on or tried to take on the cause uh, that was inadvertently or not not purposely left behind by Colin Kaepernick. That he started last year with the with the move towards uh, social justice, uh, towards uh, police the way the way black people are, are policed, that being reformed, uh, things of that nature, and it, it, it's been headed up in not officially but unofficially by Malcolm Jenkins and uh, and Anquan Bolden, and uh, those two guys along with like Tory Smith, I think uh, I want to say um, the Long Boy. Howie Long's boy, Chris, I think his name is, is it Chris is the one I'm talking about? Chris Long, uh, they, they've made some trips to Capitol Hill, to Washington, to talk with lawmakers about about the things that need to be done. They've done things like ride-alongs with the police and going to uh, prisons and things of that nature. Um, but the big news that came out on Monday was apparently through their meetings, these meetings that they had been having with the NFL brass, Money was brought up. You know, there's been a lot of consternation uh, coming from a lot of places. The White House, uh, pizza, pizza, pizza place owners about these players, these black players protesting uh, social injustice and using the national anthem or the time designated for the national anthem and the flag bearing and all that stuff as the perfect time to let their voices be heard. Um, and in the 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 aftermath to all of that or kind of the residual effect to all that is uh, all the white people with money have been trying to figure out a way to get this to go away, either by suspending them or threatening them or, you know, publicly, I don't know if it's shaming them, but publicly uh, uh, calling them out. None of that has worked. So the one thing that most, a lot of rich white people uh, know as a tried and true way of shutting people up or getting people to do what you want to do, is to throw money at them, and that was done. It was uh, initially reported that there was a $100 million, I don't know if you want to call it donation, a uh, $100 million allocation, let's use that word, to causes, um, there's actually there's actually wording that I want, because the, the wording is kind of uh, tricky and funny. Um, God, let me see if I can find this real quick. Okay, they agreed to donate $89 million, million dollars over seven years to address, this is a quote, address social issues considered important to African-American communities, end quote, namely education, criminal justice, and law enforcement reform. That, I mean, the wording of that is, is weird to me. You know what I mean? These are things that it, it's a, it, 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 it gives the feeling as though the issues that affect us as black people the issue well the the issues that these people are protesting only affect us as black people and that's not cool it's not this is not a separation of black people from america you know what i'm saying this is from from my point of view in the way i saw it and looked at it um was it was an effort being made to to be more inclusive in America. I got people chiming in right now, still on, on, on Facebook. If you guys want to, I've posted the article on my Facebook page at the number one, um, the number one, M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. You guys can go there and comment as well. Uh, a man, Matt Herndon, Herndon, Matt has said, uh, that Malcolm Jenkins is one. Per- well, the way, the way I, I framed it, um, I, I I said because this money has been allocated or, or, or donated as been put, Malcolm Malcolm Jenkins has now said he will no longer raise his fist. That was his mode of protest, raising the the one fist in the air. Uh, he says, as the I guess de facto one of the de facto leaders of this coalition, he'll no longer do that because the eighty nine million dollars has been uh, uh, given their way or thrown their way, or however you want to put it. Um, so I asked, is, does that mean the, the NFL boycott is over? Um, people are saying, hell no. Matt saying no, because Malcolm Jenkins is just one person. This is true. This is true. But certain times that people elevate themselves into the, to the, to the positions of figureheads. And a lot of times that's all it takes. You know what I mean? 
and, and I'm, I'm going to be interested to see interested to see how this plays out going forward. I'm sorry about that. I need to cut this damn thing off. This damn um, thing on the computer off. Um, so here's the thing. You know, th- there's there's going to be emotion in this because people are like, oh, sell out, oh, coon, and all this kind of stuff. And that's like the the emotional the emotional approach to it. Looking at it. I try I try to look at things like this from both sides and I, I don't really see it, especially when the numbers get broken down to you. These billionaire owners, right? When the number that eighty nine million dollars sounds a lot. It's over seven years. But when the number is broken down to a per owner, if that's in fact where the money's coming from, because there is also some some uh disagreement or some issue about where where this money may be even coming from. And I'll get into that in just a second. We're talking about 400,000 punk ass dollars per owner, which I believe every last one of them would gladly pay because it's the NFL. Right. And, and what we know about the NFL is this. If there is a dollar to be made out of anything, be it breast cancer, be it patriotism, be it uh, your cause, your cleats, the one, the thing that that so many of these dudes get fined for wearing customized cleats. You know what the NFL said? You know what we'll do? We'll spin it into some sort of PR win for us. And all of a sudden it becomes our idea. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, how they spin, you know, they, like they spun the Ray Rice thing until like we're all about, you know, domestic violence and preventing. The, no, you're not. You don't care. You don't give a damn. And they're going to find a way to spin this and 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 further. Because that's already started. The bastardization of this thing has already started. The moment you saw these owners linking arms and then the like the 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 the, the shot to the head, the just the Yeah, just blow your brains out. Jerry Jones, when he took that knee and he had that ish, that ish eating grin looking into that damn camera. Yeah, the ship had sailed at that point. So this is just a further attempt to bastardize this whole thing, man, and to just and to, to turn it into something and also to kind of just make it go away. Because really, that's the big problem for the NFL. It's the visual. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 the visual. It's the it's the, the nut jobs, the what did I say it was the other day? Eighty three percent. Eighty three percent of the NFL fan base is white. And I think like 60% of that is uh, is male. They try to protect that. They don't care about uh, the people who look like the people who are affected mostly by these things. Let me get back to my notes. This is One Mike with Big Mike Show. I'm here on a Friday. It's a freestyle Friday, man. So if you guys want to talk about anything else other than this, or if you hear me talk about something and you want to like switch the subject to switch to something else, you want to talk about uh, your man Flynn going to jail, possibly, or cutting a deal to send Trump to jail, or whatever you want to talk about, man. Uh, you can hit me up via my text line at 404 902 8104. You can also jump inside this live interactive chat room I got set up here on Spreaker by simply clicking that little thought bubble icon you see on your streaming player if you're in fact listening via Spreaker and not uh, via TuneIn. Uh, no Facebook live stream tonight, as you probably can tell. So you got to only listen to me and you don't get, get a chance to be horrified by looking at me. Um, the other thing that made me that, that I wondered about this is um, what's next? You know what I mean? Like they keep telling us that Colin Kaepernick is a part of this and other and he's he and his lawyers are saying he's not. Um, the way this is kind of shaking out, you got players like Eric Reed and, and Kenny Stills and and folks like that saying that they're not this is kind of a, a backdoor deal. Oh, I know what I wanted to bring up to you guys. Uh where Eric Reed is saying this money is coming from. And the reason that he doesn't want to be a part of it, and it makes so much sense to me that he's he's a he's essentially saying that the NFL is playing a shell game with this money. Here's Reed. Here's Eric Reed, who did an interview with Jeremy Stahl of uh, Slate. I don't think I've ever heard of Slate, but uh, they got the interview with, with Eric Reed. He said uh, one of his points of contention 
is that the league's pledge to allocate the nearly $90 million for social issues isn't new money being offered by the owners. You say, why is that a problem? I'll tell you. Instead, the money would be reallocated from the league's current initiatives for breast cancer awareness and salute to service in honoring veterans. And a couple of months ago, October, like like the first week into October, I was watching football and I was like, what the hell's going on? What, why is there no like everybody was wearing pink last year? And then somebody on social media told me that that initiative, it expired. So <laughs> because it's not like breast cancer hadn't gone away, but apparently if if the money has dried up, uh, 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 the the amount that you care about it has. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty fitting as far as the NFL is concerned. I, I yeah, that works for me. <laughs> that that makes sense. Um, Reed is quoted as saying, um, "It would really be no skin off the owners' backs. They would just move the money from those programs to this one. We didn't agree to that." Because we aren't trying to cut other worthy programs. They move forward anyway. And that seems to be where the divide is. When people start, like, and this is, this is one of the best ways to divide and conquer. Throw some money into a situation and watch everybody. Everybody will have an opinion. Everybody will start disagreeing. There will be some people that just see the money and say, there it is. And you have the feeling that Malcolm Jenkins and Anquan Bolden are those guys that just saw the money. And it, I'm not saying they're, they're taking money and putting it in their pockets. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that they, it feels as though they have the perspective of we've got this money. Now we can start changing things. And there's other people that are saying, no, it's got to be more than that. First of all, that ain't enough money to change anything in America, especially over a couple of years. No, it's, it's people throwing way more money than that at politicians. And what you guys are doing is talking about throwing it into splitting that money into a couple of different avenues in order to try to get things done. One of those avenues being uh, the retraining, I think it was, the retraining of the police. Mm. Yeah, that's the government job, B. You know what I'm saying? Like when you start taking donation money and you feel like you got to – because then what happens? What happens after that if stuff still happens, if stuff is still going on? Because this year, even, even through all the protests and all the other craziness that's been going on, this year, uh, America has experienced more uh, cop on civilian violence than it did last year. Only problem is you got a douchebag in the White House now that can't stop tweeting about nuclear bombs and and he, he's colluding with Russians and all this kind of stuff. So it doesn't get covered the way it got the way Philando Castillo got covered. But it's still happening. Quite frequently, it happened to a couple of white folks this year that that, that was reported. You know, when the white dude showed up to the lady's house because she was about to get married and she called the police because she thought she heard somebody getting sexually assaulted. He says he heard a loud bang and started shooting and killed a woman. Somewhere up in Minnesota, I believe it was. So it's still happening. And I'm not sure that just throwing money like I don't think you throw a bunch of money at at the police. And then the, the ones who who say that they're, they're so scared of black people all of a sudden aren't scared of black people anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I, it may work that way. I just happen to not, not think it works that way. It's a freestyle Friday, man, here on the one mic with big Mike show freestyle Friday, meaning uh, whatever's on your mind, man, hit me up, let me know. And we'll, we'll talk about it, man. I, I, I try to make sure that I'm, I'm semi versed in whatever's going on. So if you, if you hit me with something, I should have a thought on it. I should know what you're talking about. And even if I don't, you can you can keep me abreast of the situation or you can make me abreast of the situation uh, one way by texting me at 404-902-8104 or by jumping inside my live and interactive chat room. Um, got some pretty good games going on in the NFL this weekend. Um, I don't even have the schedule here in front of me. I just know the the, the Vikings are taking on the um, the Falcons. I think that's here in Atlanta. And also you get to see <laughs> you get to see Geno Smith and Geno Smith is going to have an opportunity to do some things. I know everybody wanted to like lose their mind because, oh, Eli Manning got benched. Look here, man. I said it on Wednesday. Things don't end that way. Like things don't always just end perfectly for people. It's the NFL, man. And also, man, it's a production based business, man. If you're not producing, I think the biggest problem is, of course, that it's Geno. You know, we feel like we, we've watched that movie before. We've seen what's popping with that. 
and it wasn't good. Either time that we've seen the Geno Smith experience, it ain't been that good. You know what I mean? Um, oh, you know what else I forgot to mention? There's a Colin Kaepernick sighting today. No, not sighting. I'm playing. Uh, but he was. He was named uh, the Muhammad Ali Legacy Award per uh, Sports Illustrated. So, you know, the NFL, they just missed it, man. They missed an opportunity, and now they're trying to, like, pick up those loose pieces. They they missed an opportunity to affect, to heavily affect the people that, let's keep it real, they rely on for business. And I don't mean as customers, because they don't rely on us for customers, black people for customers. They rely on their white fan base. It's 83%, like I mentioned earlier. And amongst that last 17%, that's everybody. That's everybody else. That's, you know, if you black, if you Asian, if you Hispanic, if you whatever else, you're in that last 17%. If you Native American, you're in that 17% together. So it's not like 83% are are white and the other 17% are black. Nah, and it still wouldn't matter, I don't think, in that, in that scenario. But for their on-field product, it's the total opposite. It's like 70, was it like 75% of the players on the football field are black players. And they had a real, they had a decent opportunity in order to uh, look as though, at least give the appearance as though those people matter to them. Which is why I can understand, man. When like people say they don't watch football no more, they stop watching football. Football's been boring this year. Let's keep it real. For the most part, it's been boring as hell. Um, I don't know if one thing had, had to do enough with the other, but the people who, who have uh, boycotted, you ain't missed nothing. <laughs> you really straight up, yeah, missed the damn thing, and I can see why you would, you know, not necess- And for the people who think they're making a, a difference, uh, you know, there's a little bit of concern with you because you're really not. But for the people who are just like, you know what, I just don't want to participate in this just because that's to me that's a more more viable thing. You know what I mean? Oh, I need to type something right quick. All right. All right, we'll move on and we might we might get back to that uh conversation here in just a second. I'm just gonna kinda spray to all fields until I'm out of stuff to talk to or talk about or unless you guys run out of stuff to talk about as well. Um I mentioned Derek Jeter earlier. Derek Jeter's going to hell, man. Um Derek Jeter has now become he's the boss of the is it the Miami Marlins or is it the Florida Mar- Marlins? They they were one and now the other. And I can't remember which is which, but either way, the Marlins, the baseball team, uh, Derek Jeter was a part of a ownership group. And basically he was the um, the Magic Johnson of the ownership group, the same um, way Magic Johnson or Jay-Z was with the with the Nets. He was the recognizable name on it, put him put in a little bit of money, but not nearly, not nearly as much as the other uh, contributing the contributors in the owner owners group. God, what the hell is wrong with me? Um, But now he's running things. They're allowing him to run the baseball operations. He's uh, telling Giancarlo Stanton that he needs to waive his no-trade clause. He's going to start releasing people or letting people go so they can clear up their cap situation, Um, start firing people. And then the the thing today, oh, my God, this was was an awesome, like, total – bad guy move man <laughs> and there there really is no other way to to chop this up the marlins let's just say Derek jeter they fired a long time scout that seems you know that don't seem too bad you know people get fired new management comes in people people lose their jobs but wait there's more a long time scout who needs a kidney transplant you say damn that's yeah that's messed up man but still you know, that that kind of stuff happens. You know, the timing, timing sometimes is bad. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. but also while he was laying in the hospital bed and recovering from colon cancer surgery. <laughs> Yo, a few days before the bad news, this guy named Marty Scott had a cancerous tumor and a polyps removed from his colon. The doctors found the cancer while he was undergoing tests for a kidney transplant because he has diabetes. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Let me, before I go any further, because I'm going to take a break here in a second. Yeah, there's another element to this story. Um, 
Derek Jeter didn't even do it himself. He sent some some dude who's been with the with the with the Marlins for like hella years. He ain't even gonna tell the dude himself. He sent some mid level, you know, flunky to do it. To like go tell old Marty, hey man, get better fast, cause when you get better, you ain't gonna have no gig. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I I could laugh about it, but because I ain't do it, but I recognize I like game recognized game, man. It's looking familiar. This is a bad guy move. This is a bad guy move by my standards, D. Uh, G. Golly, Derek Effing Jeter, man. Good for him, dude. Good for him. Like the balls on that dude, old Captain. And the, the other the other side of this is, are we looking? Are we looking at a situation because people are starting to. People starting to really warm up to that dude, Alex Rodriguez, man. They starting to love that dude. He with he with J Lo. He doing his thing on Fox TV for the pregame shows and whatnot. People are really they they talking they putting his name in the in the hat for the Yankees manager manager position. Like uh, it, it, it's amazing how with social media, people's uh, personas get turned upside down. The same reason how Michael Jordan is a meme now. He's not like, like, he still is, to many people, the greatest basketball player who's ever lived. But most people, just general people, just, just know him as the crying Jordan meme. Like, young folks, that's a crazy thing to imagine. Like, if, if, imagine in 1996, if you could have possibly envisioned what a meme would have been back then. That Michael Jordan would have been that. A A, a, a joke. A widely accepted joke that has been around now for, my God, years. Like, when you think it's going to go away because Tyrese did something or somebody else did this, and it's like, nope, <laughs> straight crying Jordan meme every time. <laughs> and now Derek Jeter's about to have it. Like, everybody was in love with Derek Jeter, the Yankees' Derek Jeter. He's a champion. He's a winner and all this kind of stuff. But now you're in a position where you got to do some terrible things to people, man. And it, it feels like I don't know how that stuff works, but it feels like one of those things that could have probably been handled a little bit differently. Like when my man gets out of the hospital, like I don't know how long he would have had to been there, but if it was two weeks, even three baseball season is like we here now. It ain't like he was going out scouting right now. You could have waited till my man was like somewhere that he wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like in, in that type, his, him and his family, all in some type of emotional distress. Jesus, before I break, man, um, my old lady just texted me. She's down in, um, in Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, her nephew, our nephew, my nephew by marriage, is playing in the, in the, na not in the national championship. That's not correct. He's playing in the state championship. I didn't even ask her who he was playing against. Uh, he goes to Carver of Atlanta. I think he's a junior. Yeah, he's a junior at Carver of Atlanta, man. And they're playing for the uh, the state championship. So, you know, big up to them. My mother-in-law is a, she's also a uh, alumni, alumnus. How is it? She's an alumnus of the school. So they down there, you know what I'm saying, rooting them on or whatever, asked me if I wanted to go. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Got the show to do, you know what I'm saying, Freestyle Friday or whatnot. <laughs> nah, I ain't want to go no way. Uh, either way. Like I just mentioned, man, it's Freestyle Friday. I'm about to take a break. You guys can hit me up a couple of different ways at 404-902-8104, 404-902-8104. You can also uh, text me or, excuse me, you can also hit me up on social media at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Do so via, spree, or via Facebook or uh, Twitter and Instagram or uh, jump inside my live interactive chat room here on Spreaker, S P R E A K E R dot com. Spreaker also has an app. If you want to go ahead and throw that on your mobile device, go ahead and do so. And once you start listening, you'll see a little thought bubble icon. Just click on that, it'll get you inside the live interactive chat room. I'll be back. Well, I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at One Mike with Big Mike dot com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one mic. I had a sore in my mouth that just wouldn't go away. 
And after a couple of weeks, I went to my doctor. A sore, lump, or thick patch in your mouth or throat could be a symptom of oral cancer. My doctor told me I was smart to come in. He said that oral cancer is more common in African-American men than in any other group in the U.S. It turns out I did have oral cancer. But it was caught early and my treatment was successful. I'm glad I got it checked. That probably saved my life. If you're an African-American man, you need to know about oral cancer. Visit a doctor or dentist if you see changes in your mouth that don't go away after two weeks. It's important to get an oral cancer exam. Because if you do have cancer, the earlier it's caught, the better. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health. And now, 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 back to one mic. What are we waiting for? Let's get to it. With Big Mike. Need a soldier. Welcome back to the Friday episode, the Freestyle Friday episode of the One Mike with Big Mike Show, heard live right now. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7 o'clock on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, and tune in. Usually I got my Facebook live stream pumping as well, but uh, not tonight. No such luck. The show can also be heard on demand anytime, 24 7, uh, via the platforms I've already mentioned, as well as on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. Google Play Music and the good old YouTube. Um, I'm not sure my old lady knows what the hell she was talking about because I'm looking at I'm looking at my Facebook here, and a lot of people are talking about they're at semifinals games. Uh, here in 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 the state of Georgia, so she may be going to a semifinals game, and she thinks that she don't know crap about sports, or her mom probably told her something that she didn't she wasn't really clear on. Because they didn't took buses down there and everything. That appear, excuse me. Apparently, this may in fact be the semifinals game. So, either way, man, big up to them. Good luck to them and all them, all that good stuff. Uh, I put a couple of polls up on my on my Twitter page at one mic with big Mike. You can just uh, type in the hashtag one mic poll. P O L L. That was so soft work. Uh, as I thought about it, I think it's I think that's what I put it under. Yeah, one mic poll. One M I C P O L L. I'll talk about those here in just a second. Also, I got an announcement to make after uh, we take a look back, and I do on this day. Now, 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 let's take a look back. This day. On this day. All right. The final, ep- final edition of On This Day for this week, and the first one of the month of December. Wow. Where the hell did 2017 go, man? You know, it, well, if this orange douchebag is in office, hopefully the next three go as fast, even though they'll be even more uh, eventful, probably. Anyway, on this day in 1924, the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Maroons played the very first NHL game to be played in the United States. The game was played at Boston Arena on this day in 1964. The Houston Colt 45s. <laughs> I wonder if Billy D. Williams was the was the owner. Either way, they changed their names to the Astros. That's like a team that like I'd have here in Atlanta, like the Decatur Hennessies. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right. On this day in 1967, Seattle was awarded an American League franchise, of course, the Mariners. Uh, also on this day in 1967, Wilt Chamberlain. He set an NBA record when he missed 22 free throws. Speaking of missed free throws, did y'all see that game? Was it last night? Ben Simmons and them, they kept fouling Ben Simmons. Were they playing Washington? They kept fouling him. He shot like 20-something free throws in the, uh, like 24 free throws in the fourth quarter, setting a record. I had to turn it off. I couldn't watch that, to be honest with you. It was just, it was terrible. I understand the strategy because my man don't shoot the free throw well, but I, I had to, some stuff on DVR that couldn't wait for for the sake of that, I mean. Um, I think he only hit like... 15 of the 29 he took in the game though so he's got to work on that that's that's his achilles heel that's the thing he's got to get better at and um, um like guys like andre drummond blake griffin have shown that you can do so on this day in 1984 showed ass doug flutie won the 50th heisman trophy just saw lamar jackson on on tv earlier man that dude uh actually had a much better season this year than he had last year only difference is this year there's some competition for the 
uh, uh, for the trophy in, in one Baker Mayfield last year. Deshaun Watson came on late, but by that time there was too much there was there was too much distance between him and Lamar Jackson, and uh, the, the 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 award was given out before the playoffs and so forth and so on. And finally, on this day in 1997, turn this down a little bit. Your boy Latrell Sprewell of the Golden State Warriors of that time. This 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 line, well, how it's written, it says he attacks his coach, P.J. Carlissimo. He choked the hell out of his coach, P.J. Carlissimo, for talking spicier at him at practice. Oh, I think I think Spree got suspended for the year for that, if I'm not mistaken. He missed a whole year behind that, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can somebody can uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong. But, yeah, he choked out P.J. Carlissimo. I, still, I saw the picture today when I was looking for a picture to post it. That my man was, he still had the, the fingerprints, the marks on his neck for, on the way my man grabbed him by his, by, <laughs> by his thok. And that is your Friday, your Freestyle Friday edition of On This Day. 404-902-8104 is the number you want to text me at. Uh, also, the live interactive chat room is wide open here on Spreaker. If you're listening via Spreaker, you see that little thought bubble icon there. Just click on that. It'll get you inside the chat room real quick. Um, where did I leave? Oh. Okay, so we got to talk about, oh, before I go there, let me get you guys in on these poll questions real quick. Um, <laughs> they're so stupid. What would surprise you more? If Tim Tebow came out of the closet or if Tim Tebow was accused of sexual misconduct by a female, you know, kind of like, you know, interjecting the whole the whole thing. I asked the question the other day, like, who would who would surprise people if they got uh, uh, accused of, of sexual misconduct the way everybody seems to be going down like all these white boys and you know russell simmons and that, that old ass dude Kanye. you know they got sprinkling a couple of bruhs to make the quota but they're going down by this by the sexual misconduct stuff um so far man with 17 hours left here on the one mic with big mike twitter page no one would be surprised if tim tebow came out the closet that's really why i posted the the, the poll to be honest with you because i saw him on tv today and he was getting mad I think he was getting mad at like Stephen A. Smith over these college football playoffs. And my man was real sassy, man. <laughs> it was like extra, extra sassy, man. And I was like, wait a minute. What's happening with Tim Tebow here? And by the way, I have terrible what they call gaydar. I don't know. I don't know if people like people can look. My, my wife can do this. Like she's able to look at people and say, oh, that, that dude's gay or that girl's gay or whatever. I don't I don't necessarily have that ability. But I'm looking at Tim Tebow this morning. I'm like, wait a minute now. Could there be, and because he's like hella like Jesus guy and and Bible man, that he he can't right? It wouldn't it wouldn't play left with his play left. It wouldn't play right <laughs> with his base, as though he's like a candidate for something. But yeah, it, yeah you know, uh, the other poll question had had to do with um, Lonzo Ball, not Lonzo, Lavar Ball, and I'll talk about him a little bit into the show as well he apparently sent his man president trump some of those zo twos that just came out the well that just got delivered to people after like a seven month delay and i wonder you know how would people feel about the shoe if people like the shoe already would they start hating it or you know if they didn't like it would it make a difference if uh the orange ghoul agent orange was was rocking a pair and i only ask this question because it's kind of one of those things that kind of like goes down racial lines and also it could be a thing that whatever whatever momentum this little big ball of brand business has could possibly sink it <laughs> you know what i mean it could probably possibly sink it especially in the black community if donald trump come out one day i don't know where he would be you know on the golf course or somewhere wearing some zo twos yeah grand opening grand closing be there will be no zo threes <laughs> at least none that anybody will be buying especially for the five for the 500 i saw the i saw the unboxing of the shoe on, on espn i think I, I posted the video on my um on my facebook if you guys if you guys hadn't seen it um yeah the the unboxing they try to like spruce up the box look like more than the shoe they put like velvet or a velvet type material inside the box uh the dude who who was unboxing the shoe was like well it's coming apart from the box so that's the thing they put magnets to hold the shoe box closed and they like it's a bag for the shoes in the box. And I guess the guy was a he was uh, explaining that most high end shoes, they do come with bag, but they come with multiple bags, bags, plural for each shoe, one bag for each shoe. 
Uh, the Zo twos come with one bag for each shoe. So I, I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not a, a sneakerhead. Like I got a bunch of sneakers, but it's not sneakers that people go crazy over. It's just like whatever I like. You know, the, the three brands: is Adidas, Nike, and Jordan. I guess Jordan and Nike is the same brand, whatever. But that's pretty much my my choice. You know what I'm saying? So. And it's not because like, oh, the Jordan 17s are coming out. I don't know those. I don't know what shoes are called. I know what I like. And if I get a good price on them, I buy them. That's pretty much how my shoe collection goes. It's like 50 or 60 pair of just shoes that, you know what? I like those. And guess what? They they got a good price point to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They go, with, they go with one of my hats or I can get a hat to go with them or, you know, whatever. So uh, that's that. I said I was going to get back to... Um, this college stuff. But first, since I'm on LeVar Ball already, this dude is going this dude is going to mess around and really wear out his welcome, man. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to to this to this Lakers thing cuz this is the second time after the game. I don't know if you guys saw the game the other night. Um uh, Warriors and the um the Lakers, right? Went into overtime. It was 109-109. Julius Randle gets a rebound. And uh, calls a timeout. What, what you what you see usually happening uh, uh, at that time of the game, once the game is in the balance, is a couple seconds left for the coach, in this case Luke Walton, to set up a a final play. Well, the play doesn't go well. They go into overtime, obviously, and then the better team wins. You know, the better player and Steph Curry starts doing what Steph Curry does. But leave it up to your man. And again, this is the second time he's done this. The first time it was about they don't know how to coach my boy when people was asking him about this kid struggling. Now he's saying, now he's questioning decisions, not only from the coach, but one of this kid's teammates. Now, the kid had a decent game, but it wasn't one of those like, you know, like, oh, that's the breakout game of the season. It's time to calm down. It's like 12 points or something like that, 14 points. So somebody, you know, as they do, they put a microphone in, in your man LeVar's face after the game is over. He says, I tell you what the crucial point. When Julius got that ball at the end, he should have thrown it forward to Hulavar. Yep, Lonzo was wide open. <laughs> He's wide open for a layup or a three pointer. <laughs> I I might be with you a little bit on the layup B, but this is a kid that's shooting 17% at the crib. And that's where they were at. That's up to 17% because he hit a couple in this particular game. That's game. It wouldn't have went to overtime. That was game. He goes on to say, Julius, talking about Julius Randle, who, by the way, is a monster. Like, Julius Randle is crazy aggressive on the foot. I mean, on the basketball court, man. Um, he said, Julius tried to take too many dribbles. Then they fouled him, or they called a timeout. But if he would have thrown the ball ahead, coach wouldn't have called a timeout. Even if he did, he can't call it because the ball's in the air. Lonzo's running the lane, game over. That's the best time to score. I wonder what he would have said if, like in a lot in a couple of games this year, if his boy's ass would have been on the on the bench during the fourth quarter, and that would have been let's say Corey Brewer, as he put it, running the lane. If he would have had the same, like you know what, he should have thrown it to Corey Brewer. Doubt it. This is gonna get old, man. Eventually, and the one thing that I'm like, if I was a wishing man <laughs> or a praying man, the thing I'd be wishing and praying for. A LeVar Ball, Bill Walton beef. <laughs> the father of Lonzo and the father of, what's the other kid's name? The, uh, Luke. The father of Lonzo and the father of Luke going at it. Both they crazy asses. Ah, uh, that would be bliss. That would be better than, that would be better than Lonzo Ball and Trump. Because Trump kind of dropped that thing real early because he got other stuff to worry about, you know, going to jail and you know, his his son-in-law going to jail and he ain't got other stuff to worry about. He ain't got to worry about. He can't be worried about, you know, Lonzo Ball not thanking him for getting this boy out of jail, which, again, I, I still think is a damn lie. I don't think he did anything. You know what I mean? I think he just picked an opportunity to try to get some praise and then he didn't get it and everything kind of just, you know, fell flat on his face. Um, This is all about the weekend. This weekend, man, it's all about the NCAA, man. It's all about college football. This is Freestyle Friday on the One Mic with Big Mike Show. 404-902-8104 is the number you want to text me at. Uh, even if you listen to the show on demand, you can still text me 
um and we'll you know we'll pick it up we, we might even hold it over whatever you whatever you text me we might hold it over till next uh freestyle friday um did i mention also that today that this um month at the end of this month end of this year um i'll be closing down shop man the one mic with big mike show will be over you know what i mean i've decided to take uh i've done this for like over two years now you know what i mean it's time to kind of like move on to something else it's been real it's been cool but i think after this year after you know uh somewhere around the new year before the new year yeah i'm gonna close up shop it's gonna be my last episode man not this one but you know in a couple of weeks you know i'll be doing the, the final episode of the one mic with big mike show so that's uh that's the big news i guess that's the big news that i have for you guys i don't know how big it is for y'all but you know it, it's a thing man because I've, I've dedicated a lot of a lot of man hours a lot of effort into this and uh, i don't i don't want to get into the position where i feel like i'm phoning it in and that's how it feels you know because i haven't had the, the guests on uh like i like i had at one point and it gets kind of redundant you know just me sitting here and talking to the microphone like i can do it and i have been doing it but you know i know you know, I know what kind of moves the, the proverbial needle or whatnot, and I hadn't been putting the, putting as much effort into that because it is an effort. You know what I'm saying? When you have a, a show that's not, you know, not so well known to convince people to come on and talk to you, it's not the easiest thing to do. But, you know, with that being said, yeah, end of the end of the year, uh, that'll do it. That's going to that's going to be a wrap for the one mic with Big Mike show. I will be I will try my hand at uh, a podcasting network, though, where I'll, I'll have other people doing podcasts and promoting their podcasts and and doing those type of things here on Spreaker as well as on the other outlets as well. So I'm, I'm going to be working on that. Uh, uh, I started last week, but I will be starting on it uh, moving forward a little bit more and putting a little bit more effort into it uh, this week and over the weekend. Uh, but what, what was I doing college football? So University of Tennessee, that dumpster fire, that pile of flaming dumpster juice, has fired their ad um and they've gone back to the well going back to uh philip fulmer he is now the the athletic director at the university of tennessee if you don't know who philip fulmer is he was the head coach the last time the university of tennessee won a national championship the quarterback on that team was a man named t martin t martin will be calling the offense for the usc trojans tonight on espn as they try to win a pac-12 championship beat usc for the second time this year um, and it's funny how this his guy's name hadn't come. Well, it, people have brought his name up, but the University of Tennessee, it feels like they should have gone and got him first. Immediately. Someone that the school recognizes, someone who's been in college football for quite some time now, a guy who survived the either firing or, or well, yeah, it's called the fire because Lane Kiffin got fired. Steve Sarkeesian got fired. They got a new coach. I don't remember his name. But T. Martin, still there, calling that off, calling that offense, still. Yet, his name is not being mentioned as much as a lot of people feel like it should be. Um, the NC State head coach, speaking of names being mentioned, and the NC State head coach, he declined uh, the University of Tennessee's offer to become their next head coach. Um, who was it? Mike Gundy? Guess what Mike Gundy did? Went back to Oklahoma State, just like I said on Wednesday, and did what? Got a, what is it, 700000 I think it was a $700,000 raise. It might have been seventy thousand. I don't think it was seventy. It had a seven in it, and I just saw it in passing, and didn't really stop because I was just like, "So I told you so." Like that's what this is all about. Now everyone's gonna go to uh, everyone's gonna go to Tennessee for the come up. <laughs> you know I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna leave. Uh, they're gonna act like they're gonna leave, not leave, go back to their school. I'm like, look, man, people want me and get more money. My man Willie Taggart just got broke off. Huge money by Oregon because of the threat and a threat that seemed to be real now because um, my man Jimbo Fisher is going. I'll talk about that here in a second. Mike Leach from Texas Tech, you know, with crazy air raid offense. Uh, where's Mike Leach now? Arizona? I don't remember where Mike Leach is at right now. Either way, he's another name that's before T. Martin. Supposedly on their radar, no Nothing's been uh, put into put in stone yet as far as re whether they'll be uh, hiring him or not. Uh, the aforement or the 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 formal formerly the head coach of the Texas A and M Aggies, Kevin Sumlin, another name that uh, seems to be on their radio. And then 
I think somewhere, just because of now Phil Farmer, be, Phil Farmer being there, which it should be obvious at this point. These are two men who have worked together before. Like, of course, T. Martin was a kid at the time. But it, it, unless there is something else going on within their relationship that people don't think or Phil Farmer doesn't think they can work together at this point, I don't see why he wouldn't be the the head and shoulders, obvious choice to become the new head coach of uh, 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 the, ten- the, the, the Tennessee Volunteers. It's just weird, man. Um, shout to, oh, shout to Herm Edwards. This Herm Edwards thing, I stay corrected from what I said on Wednesday. I thought the Herm Edwards thing was a a John Gruden play. You know, every year John Gruden's name comes up with some college team or some pro team. Maybe they should go and hire John Gruden. And every time you turn around, ESPN just give him more money to the point where now he is by far the highest paid uh, 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 employee at ESPN who, by the way, just laid off, I don't know if I mentioned this on Wednesday, laid off 150 more people. Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is, and, and if, you, if you've if you been in media and radio, a lot of times this is the time of year that it happens. I don't know why, um, but I, I don't know if it's like a, a housekeeping, book bookkeeping type thing. But People get their ass fired like right around Christmas time. It's, it's, it's weird as hell. Um, but the Herm Edwards thing was real. Apparently he will now be the head coach of uh, Arizona State. What are they? The the Sun Devils? Yeah. Herm Edwards is going to be the coach at 60 whatever years old. Had a blossoming, no, it blossomed television career over at ESPN. You know, doing his thing, but he's going back to get on the damn recruiting trail and deal with people's kids and beg people's kids to come to his school and deal with NCAA rules and violations and my man. Good for him, I guess. Good for him. And the, the part that I stand correcting on is Apparently, there was a lot of uh, uh, familiarity is the word I'm looking for. There's a lot of fil- familiarity when it comes to uh, the people. I think the the GM, not the GM, the AD was a black guy. Somebody else that was involved in the hiring. Herm Edwards had a relationship with, had good relationships with maybe his former agent or something of that nature. Um, you know, to, to get him to leave that ESPN desk and come and try to resurrect their program. And that's the part that I was missing on Wednesday. I just figured like Herm's name, like he had an agent, like John Gruden's agent is like, Hey, let me throw Herm's name out here in connection with this college team. Then we can get paid again. No, apparently Herm Edwards is going to coach kids. And people say like, what does Herm Edwards know about coaching college football? I don't know. But what I do know is that he does a lot of those. Um, he's, he's familiar with, you know, dealing with the younger kids because he coaches some of those, uh, those like Under Armour, you know what I'm saying, uh, all-star games, those high school all-star games and things of that nature. So he kind of, you know, he, 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 he kept his, his coaching, his coaching chops sharp. If we want to put it that way. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo's out. You know, it, again, it, it felt like a, like I might, I might leave now. Where this money at? Uh, but Jimbo was tired of the bull crap. Apparently, you know, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago um, after the game, he he challenged that dude to come down there so he could whoop his ass. <laughs> and then the other day, they done shoved some dude out of the uh, you know these college coaches. They have these local radio shows. They have a live audience um, as a part of the radio show. And some dude stood up and asked Jimbo Fisher about about loyalty. Um. He didn't like it. He she stared the dude down. I guess that was the cue for his minions, whoever they were, strength coaches or whoever, assistant coaches, eight uh, 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 grad grad assistants. They start shoving this dude <laughs> out of the damn out of the damn restaurant or wherever the hell they were at. It was a weird scene. And then next thing you know, Jimbo's like, "I'm out. I can't take this crap no more." And shout to him because this is what I was talking about the other day. That you go to Texas and them, it seems like a step down, right? But you got you in Texas, you got you still got resources. Um, you in the post Johnny Manziel era where all that money flowed into Texas A&M. New stadium and and facilities and all this kind of stuff. It's a cool spot if you just want to go somewhere with expectations ain't ain't going to be as high as at Florida State because you've already won a national championship there. So the expectations are for every year you in the ACC, you should compete for this national championship, not this thing that happened this year at all. And with that being said, my man, my man scratched out a 10-year deal. Hmm. 
10 years, $75 million deal. You know what that's all about to me? What I hear when I see that? Yeah, I don't think Nick Saban is going to last 10 years. Maybe five more, which gives me five after that, after he leaves, to start wrecking shop. <laughs> Shout out. That, that, that's got to be the move, right? Because if you don't do that, you turn out like, like, like uh, what's my man's name? The Mad Hatter. You turn out like the rest of these dudes, the dudes from Old Well, the dude from Old Miss is another story. Um, but you turn out like a lot of these other dudes that get fired because they can't beat Nick Saban. They can't compete with Nick Saban, so they get ready to fire these damn dudes. If you if you're if you're freaking uh Jimbo Fisher, yeah, you get you a 10 year deal. And you just try to wait, wait uh uh, uh Nick Saban out. You know what I'm saying? Because you got you got one of those rings that he got, although he got like five of them. But you get what I'm saying. Jimbo got a few. He got a couple when he was at Florida State as well. Though he got one from Alabama as well. He got a few of them damn rings. Um, There was something else. I, I think I just mentioned it, and now I just slipped my mind. Oh, the old Miss. That bomb, that bomb finally blew. And this is the one Mike with Big Mike show here on a Friday. I know it's date night. A lot of you guys out there, you know, hanging out with your old lady and doing your thing. Um, But appreciate the guys who are, guys and girls who are listening. I appreciate you guys. Uh, 404-902-8104 if you want to text the show. It's Freestyle Friday, meaning I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you just want me to want to cut me off and, and bring something else up right now, by all means, man, hit me up and we'll we'll discuss whatever you got on the mind, no matter what what uh, what walk of life it's in, sports, politics, social media, uh, social issues, uh, pop culture, however you want to run it. You can also do so via my live interactive chat room here on Spreaker. Let's click that little thought bubble icon you see on your streaming player. It'll get you up in here. You can send me your messages, and I can I can I can send them back. I can type them back to you. I can speak them back to you. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, hit me up. But no, this this Ole Miss thing. It's a lovely, lovely thing from the from the time. Like Ole Miss should have known. You can't get the number one draft. Uh, excuse me, recruiting class in Ole Miss, and no one notices. Come on. And now it's all you got. A, you got a pervy head coach calling sex lines on the company phone. Come on, man. I used to work with a dude. I get. I, well, I don't think he had a computer though, so this may be an excuse for him. But every time the computers at the gig, at the gig at the station would get uh, viruses on them, everyone knew who it was. Then, the, then the, the, the IT person would come in and clear up the virus and figure out Black Planet immediately from Black Planet, <laughs> and it was always the same dude every time. You know what I mean? Speaking of oh, speaking of black dudes. At radio station, my, my my dude hit me the other day on some some of the funniest stuff ever. Apparently, he's the only black dude at the station he works at, and um, we in, we're at the beginning of December. This December hadn't even hit yet, and he works with a bunch of people who openly, I guess, support Donald Trump. Here's the funny part: all of them, all of them want Martin Luther King Day off. <laughs> And then they hitting him. He sends me the screenshot of the text message. Hey man, can you work? <laughs> can you work on on, on MLK Day? Or I, I think they just put the date, I'm trying to see if he just wasn't gonna realize what day it was. And uh, he texts him back like real, like professionally. Uh, no offense, but I don't work anywhere on MLK Day. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude, you, you handled that way better than I did. <laughs> I would have, I should say, because I would have, you know, I would have dropped some some real like anti-racial stuff. Yeah, you forgot to call me an N-word while you asked me that, punk. All the white people, all of a sudden, and I don't like, I can't, I can't be mad at it because like if they had a Ku Klux Klan day, I'm not begging to go to somebody's job just because I disagree with the, with the format or the people that the day is is there to celebrate. You know, I do it. I do it. What we usually do, what black folks usually do on that day, we just go barbecue. You know what I mean? <laughs> and just call it a damn day. All right, it's top of the hour here on the one mic with Big Mike shows Freestyle Friday. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna talk about um, Ole Miss and what's happened to them, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the 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 championship weekend that's starting today, starting in a little while here. I just saw the national anthem. My guess is what I saw. Uh, Stanford. You guys get a chance to check out Bryce Love if you hadn't seen him play this year. One of the best running backs in the nation. Um, and this kid, Sam Darnold, who, I mean, I hadn't seen him since the beginning of the year. So things may have, things tonight may change my opinion. I, I was never too impressed with him uh, as at a court, at, um, 
as a quarterback, but they're showing a lot of his you know highlights and good throws right now. So maybe uh, my my perspective on the situation will change a little bit by the end of this game. Don't know. I'm, I'm gonna keep an open mind though. You know. But anyway, it's Freestyle Friday, man. It's here. It's every Friday on the One Mike with Big Mike show, giving you an opportunity to uh, let me know what you would talk about if you had a show. If you had your own podcast or whatnot, what would you talk about on a day like today? Let me know and we'll, we'll discuss it. You can let me know at 404-902-8104. That is my text line, 404-902-8104. You can also jump inside this live interactive chat room here. Uh, it's set up via Spreaker. So if you're listening via Spreaker, just click that little thought bubble icon. It'll get you up in here, man. Uh, I'll be right back. I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at One Mike with Big Mike dot com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one mic. Isn't this dinner party wonderful? Jeanette and Bill did so much planning, and the house looks great. Well, you know, it was almost canceled. Did you hear that Bill was really sick with the flu two weeks ago? No, I had no idea. I've been so busy at work. But my coworker's toddler was in the hospital with flu, too. Is Bill okay? It was pretty serious and aggravated his asthma. Bill got sick quickly with a high fever. Fortunately, Jeanette got him to the doctor right away. The doctor said it was flu and prescribed a medication that helped him get back on his feet. I didn't know flu was so serious until I heard Bill say he felt like he'd been hit by a truck. He missed a big meeting at work. Well, thank goodness Jeanette had gotten her flu shot. Because, you know, she's expecting... (gasps) What? (laughs) Oh, man. I guess that was another thing you guys didn't know either. A message from the Department of Health and Human Services. One mic. I'm back. It's the One Mic with Big Mike show. Live. There ain't no goddamn take. Interactive and on demand. <laughs> one mic. Yeah, a sports show. The best move of LeBron's career, man, was dragging his sweaty ball sack right across Draymond Green's the nap. The nape of his neck and getting that dude suspended and so much more. What's going on right now with Donald Trump? This is America. And it just it, it tickles me to death when I when white people are so shocked and appalled by it. What? It's the one mic with Big Mike show. Of course, it's like anything, like ammonia or you sniffing glue is gonna get you high. You've been warned. The one mic with Big Mike show start now. Here he is. He's real cocky, he's real loud mouth, he's real flamboyant. He don't he don't cow down to people. Big, Big Mike. 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 Yeah, man. Hour number two here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. I'm sitting here reading my my Twitter feed, and apparently, uh, uh, this is be uh, via Brett McMurphy. You guys know Brett McMurphy. Um, Such Phil, Philip Former has been sabotaging the search process in hopes to become Tennessee's AD, and he did. And he was talking about how John Curry actually wanted to hire Mike Leach. And this is why it didn't work out. Man, this college this college sports in general, man, it's a dirty-ass, grimy-ass game, man. Anyway, welcome back to the show. Don't forget, if you missed any of the first hour of the show, you can also you can always go back and check it out on demand on Spreaker.com. Download that Spreaker app. It's there, too. Also on iTunes. Tune in. iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and YouTube. Um, I figure this would be a bit uh, the best time or a better time than never to break out the brand new segment that I call what this should make y'all laugh, man. This is pretty funny to me when I heard this today and I wanted to share it with you guys. So without further ado, what? 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 wait, what? what are you saying? What? What? Um, this is, uh, I don't know her name. Her name is Dana something. She's running for the attorney general of Michigan and, um, she, presented or she she came out with her first campaign ad today and here's a here's a portion of it if the last few weeks has taught us anything it's that we need more women in positions of power not less so when you're choosing michigan's next attorney general ask yourself this who can you trust most not to show you their penis in a professional (laughs) setting (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't I don't I don't know how to answer that, man. <laughs> I don't I don't know uh <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Like who can I trust not to uh uh <laughs> Who could I trust not to show me their penis in a personal? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I guess, man, you know what? That's where we're at right now, though, right? Where, you know, dudes is, is, is pulling out their wankers in front of these bras, man, and, and thinking they weren't going to get found out. Cats got 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 buttons under their door to lock them to lock the mf -er. Nah, cuz, yeah, you... She right, <laughs> you know what I mean. You, we gotta get more. I, I said that before too, man. Like we gotta get more women involved in in things, especially when they start talking about like people start talking about stuff like, um, like 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 reproductive stuff, man. Like you got a bunch of old ass white dudes telling women what to do with their bodies, you know what they can and cannot do with their bodies. That's that's weird. If 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 nothing else, it's just weird as hell. You feel me? But anyway, I thought that was funny. I, matter of fact, I want to hear it again. <laughs> if the last few weeks has taught us anything, mm -hmm. it's that we need more women in positions of we power, do. not less. Mm -hmm. So when you're choosing Michigan's next attorney general, ask yourself this. Who can you trust most not to show you their penis in a professional <laughs> setting? I'm such a child, man. That's what makes it. That's why I'm laughing because I'm, I'm immature as hell, man. <laughs> and who can you trust? Uh, you know, I, I, I said the other day on social media, man, the one thing I'm waiting for straight up. I'm waiting for a dude. I'm waiting for a dude to come out. Like, not like not, not like Terry Crews, like dude on dude crime or like the, the, the kid that that got like fondled by uh by Kevin Spacey. Not like that. I'm talking about a dude. That got harassed by a chick. That's what I'm waiting on. That's when the shark is gonna be jumped. Like ain't nobody gonna know how to act. It's like it was like when that um when that kid from Kentucky, the twin from Kentucky called Frank Comiskey the N word, and and white folks was like hella confused. Like we know that word is wrong, but it would be so much easier to handle if Frank had called the black dude the N word. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. <laughs> That's that's what would happen, and I ain't trying. Like whatever. Okay, I gotta say that. Uh, I was gonna say I ain't trying to laugh at sexual harassment, but whatever, man. Like me laughing at it has nothing. Like no one's gonna become a sexual harasser or a sexual predator because I'm laughing at it, or it's not gonna it's not gonna diminish what actually happened to someone who has been sexually harassed because I'm laughing at something surrounding it. So screw all that. Um, but yeah, that would happen if if some dude, especially if it was like an old bastard too, like say it was was this dude Conyers. What if he came back from the hospital because apparently he got so much stress in him now. He ninety. Did y'all know this dude was ninety years old? He been in Congress since he was, since nineteen sixty five. Come on, man, they need to put a limit on that. I saw this. I saw a, 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 a show. I think it was on Vice. They actually was like wheeling some dude in with like an oxygen mask. One of these congressmen, they just keep on getting reelected and reelected and reelected. Come on, at some point, you gotta give it up, man. Like I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty certain this dude, this old bastard, <laughs> did some of that sexual misconduct stuff. But even aside from that, his ass don't need to be making the, making no judgment calls. In in 2017, when he started in 1965, his whole perspective off. You know, you start talking to this dude about cyber crimes. And Donald Trump tweeting, his old ass don't know what the hell you're talking about. Subtweeting. What? What is that? IG. Jumping in somebody's DM. He don't know nothing about that. He all about that impersonal, that up and in person, come in my office and watch me walk around in my drawers. Here's what I say about that. Because I heard that was one of the complaints. I know that one lady said that he actually like violated her body. But I, I heard one, I guess one of the complaints was like he would call women to his office and he would just be in his underwear. Now, I got to know when this happened. Because if he's just like an old brother, like we know these old cats that like, like when you get to a certain age as a black man, that's one of the perks that you ain't got to wear pants, man. <laughs> you just, you know what I mean? Like keep it real. I, I, I probably like before Judge Joe Brown went to jail for whatever it was, he went to jail. Well, he probably had no pants on under, under that damn robe. There's, there's a certain age where as a black man, you just going to have to see my junk today. But if he was like forty five or thirty, yeah, that's that's unacceptable. 
But like if this dude just in his office in his drawers and somebody said he had a closet in his office, even if he didn't, that man just chilling. He got his he got his box of briefs on or whatever old people wear, you know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know that I'd necessarily be like, well, he sexually harassed her because of that. But the other stuff, of course, you know. Also, the other thing that white people, I'm, I'm gonna move on, move back to this uh, old Miss stuff here in a minute. But the other thing that white people are kind of late on, this this Russell Simmons thing. This is kind of weird. Like I was talking to my man about this the other day, and he seemed kind of shocked about it. Like, like they got to go after, they going after the brothers. And I was like, nah, you can't really defend this dude. Uh, his wife, his former wife, I guess, Kamora Lee Simmons, they got married when he when she was 17. Now, if you think he met her at 17 and married her at 17, yeah, I got some swamp land to send you to sell you in Arizona, cuz. Nah, he was messing with like a 15, 16 year old girl. So that's not like today in 2017. Like, wait, I can't believe Russell Simmons. Come on. In the black community, we knew what time it was. Well, we thought because she was like of a different race. It didn't matter. <laughs> nah, that ain't how it worked. She was a model. He, I don't know, saw her somewhere, liked her, and then married and wiped her and put some kids in her. And they met, they got, he was married for a long time, but don't escape the fact that my man was going after young girls and or a young girl. And I would have to believe that she, there's a good chance that she wasn't the first. Like it was just a one and done situation. Like the one young ass girl that I, that I that I proposition was the one that I married as well. Mm. I mean, I guess that's possible, but if I had to put the if I had to put the mortgage on it, I wouldn't. So anyway, Ole Miss. Remember a couple years ago, what was that like four years ago? Ole Miss was number one in the country. Ole Miss was number one, and Dak Prescott's team, the the Mississippi State Bulldogs, was number two, and we couldn't believe it. It didn't last long, but it looked like something. Robert Kim Dietschy was up there. That dude Laramie Tunsil was in the building. You know what I'm saying? They had a quarterback. He's, he's kind of crazy, but, you know, it's all good. Now, <laughs> the NCAA has banned the Ole Miss football team from playing in the postseason in 2018. The Rebels were hit with scholarship reductions, and former coach Hugh Freeze was suspended as a part of the penalties handed down by the NCAA committee. Now, Hugh Freeze ain't there no more, right? He's the one who was calling the, calling the escort service, talking about he dialed the wrong number. He must have butt-dialed it. What, 17 times? <laughs> I don't know how many times it was, but you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, your man was getting all freaky deaky, and he didn't know how he was going to explain it to the wifey, so he just said the dumbest thing he possibly could have. But it don't end there. They get three years of probation until November 30th, 2020, a penalty of $5,000 plus 1% of average football budget for three years, which is calculated at about 170, about 180 grand. Um, that was self-imposed by the university. The postseason ban for 2017 was was self imposed, but this one for 2018 uh, was imposed by the NCAA. Now that's the money, a couple million dollars for a bowl game. Mm hmm. That's the money. Uh, Hugh Freeze, as I mentioned, he must serve two game suspension, conference suspension. Excuse me. For 2018, should any school hire him between uh, December 1st, 2017, and November November 30th, 2018, uh, an eight year. Wow, an eight year show cause. Order, meaning that you know people got to actually prove why you're worth hiring, why the why you're worth working there. It's a, that's a lot. An eight year show cause is in order uh, for the operations coordinator. No athletically related duties or contact with prospective student athletes and their family. You know what that's all about. <laughs> Somebody was giving up some bread for people to play football at Ole Miss. Uh, a five year show cause order for the assistant coach who facilitated standard test fraud. Oh, man. And living arrangements. No athletically related duties during this time. A two year no show, uh, show, uh, show cause, excuse me, order uh, for other involvement of involved assistant coach. No off campus recruiting activities or hosting any meals for, pro for prospects or student athletes. Yeah, man. Everybody. Come on, man. Who didn't see this coming? A five year show cause order for assistant athletics director. No recruiting activities during this time. Uh, they must vacate all regular season and postseason wins in which ineligible student athletes competed. The scholarship reductions through 2018-2019, those were self-imposed. Recruiting restrictions and disassociation from boosters. Oh, so you mean, you know, Tex and Buddy and all those big wigs, they can't come, they can't come around campus. Hmm. I'm sure Mississippi State would welcome them over there. Where is Mississippi State? Starks, Starksville? Is that where Mississippi State is? 
yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll be, they'll be welcoming some some extra boosters with open arms. I don't know, but are you a booster if you didn't go to the school? Is it part of being a booster at the school? I don't know. We're rich white people. I don't think any of this really matters. They just do what they want to do. You know what I mean, if we're gonna keep it real. Um, so let's move on. We talked about the sanctions and all that kind of stuff. Championship week tomorrow. Championship week actually actually starts tonight. We did not say that. Um, I don't know what the score is. I haven't looked up in a while to see what the score is on this game, the Stanford uh, USC game. But tomorrow, it's going digital, man. Uh, right here in my my fair city of Atlanta, got Georgia and Auburn part two. Uh, after Auburn pushed it all the way in at the crib against Georgia. Um, what's this kid's name? The uh, the kid, the running back, he's got a shoulder situation. He might not play. The guy who just ate Georgia up, he might not play. And then the other kid, Cameron Petway, he's been hurt for a while. Um, so I doubt he plays. Either. So that's gonna be that's gonna make it tough for George, for for Auburn. It's already going. It's already tough to be the team twice. But if you don't have your main guy, I feel like you know it's the NCAA. They're gonna shoot this dude up, man. Speaking of shooting up, this is why, man. When y'all hear me talk so much crap about the NCAA and this 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 shamaturism. JT Barrett hurt his knee. Uh, uh, a, a cameraman fell into his knee or something like that uh, last week, right? Versus in, in the Michigan game. He had to come out of the game. The backup quarterback had to finish the game. Um, it was bad enough to where JT Barrett had to have surgery this week. JT Barrett is going to play this weekend. <laughs> He's going to play against Wisconsin this weekend for the Big Ten Championship. And people swear to God, like, well, they get they get room and board. Yeah, what about that kid's knee, man? You know what I mean? The chemistry major ain't got to worry about that. Feel me? And then JT Barrett, he's, an, he's another one of these kids, man, that his profile, he'll probably, like, play a running back or something like that. Somebody might give him a shot at playing safety or some sort of returner or something of that nature at the next level i don't know how i don't know how fast jt barrett is he don't look extra extra fast but you know all that'll come out uh in in indianapolis i guess that's where the combine is gonna be again this year but his profile and who he is and what his name is probably won't mean as much at any other time in his life than it does right now and the fact that that kid can't capitalize on that he can't uh make any bread off of his own likeness, his name and likeness, while everybody else, even I could. If I went to if I went to, to Columbus and got some stuff signed by JT Barrett, I could throw that stuff on eBay immediately and start getting money off of JT Barrett's name and image and all that stuff. But the kid can't. Or he loses eligibility, he loses games, he gets suspended, he gets shamed, and all these all these ridiculous things. Anyway, they'll play Wisconsin this week. Uh, it's pretty much a play in game for Wisconsin. Not a guarantee play in. It's definitely if if Ohio, if Ohio State wants a chance, if they want to be looked upon seriously, they can't lose this game. Um, Oklahoma is taking on TCU for the second time this year. Oklahoma beat TCU earlier this year. Uh, Oklahoma now rate, ranked number third, number three in the college football rankings, and TCU is number eleven. There's no chance for TCU to get into these playoffs. If I'm not mistaken, they already got two losses in a two-loss uh, uh, pack. What is it? What are they? What are they? The Big Twelve. The two loss Big Twelve team has no chance ever and ever of getting into these playoffs. Uh, who am I missing? Clemson in Miami. Can't wait to see that. This uh, this young quarterback in Miami, man, he's got he's got some some making up to do from his last performance, man. Uh, but he's got to do it against one of the toughest defensive lines, defensive fronts in uh, in college football. You know what I mean? Um, their secondary, we saw their secondary exposed a little bit. Against second against Syracuse, so there will be some opportunities to throw the football down the field if if those big boys up front can hold up. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all about that life. You know what I'm all, also all about? Central Florida, B. Central Florida at or not at, but Central Florida against Memphis tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily the Memphis side, but that Central Florida team got some talent on it, man. Um, we we saw them play. What was it last week? Thanksgiving week against. Uh, 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 Charlie Strong's guys. What, where's Charlie Strong, coach? You is USF South Florida, right? Yeah, this is a nice squad, man. They're undefeated as well, but you know they don't play a Power Five conference schedule, so you know a lot of real wacky, wacky, wacky things. Not this year, but period, ever and ever would have to happen 
in order for them to ever sniff these playoffs. But I'm excited about watching these games tomorrow, man. Um, college football season is over. It seemed like yesterday it just started. We just started with who was it? The first game was like BYU and somebody they played in. They played in. Uh, is it BYU and Stanford that played in in Australia at the beginning of the season? My memory's not that good, but somebody played in Australia at the beginning of the season. And now here we are, man, end of the season, championship week, uh, the start of bowl season, a lot of meaningless bowls, and then we get to the, the New Year's uh, semifinals, and then the finals, and then it's time to rock and roll, man. It's going to be over, getting ready for the draft and all those kind of things. But, yeah, I'm, I'm lightweight excited, man. Like, college football has kind of uh, 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 taken a lot of steam. I mentioned earlier in the show, man, how the pros have just been, like, uh, just been boring. You know what I'm saying? It's just been just kind of boring to to me. But, yeah, we, we out here now with college football. It's, it's been much more of a um, aesthetically pleasing situation. Uh, more people, man, more people are, are commenting on this, this thing with Malcolm Jenkins. And the the thing that's going to happen, man, is this dude is going to become the face of something something nefarious, man. <laughs> like, you know, people going to start, yeah, man, like folks are already calling him, well, sell out and all this kind of stuff, man. Um, justice has a price, or does Malcolm have one for his cause? Man, I'm disappointed. Disappointed. Yeah, like people, are, people are gonna come down on this dude. And you know why? Because they putting his face on everything. But it ain't just him. He's the one that's actively playing. But uh, uh, uh your man, Anquan Bolden. He's at the. He's at the. He's at the head of this thing as well. But yeah, this cat, this cat, Anquan, I mean not Anquan, Malcolm Jenkins is gonna start catching some hell behind this man. I'm, I'm gonna be very, very interested to see how it plays out because as long as that starts happening and people start turning against each other, like I said, the divide and conquer starts happening. You know who's the happiest about it? These owners, they're like, this is the best four hundred grand we've ever spent. They're gonna be fighting amongst each other and leave our product alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Malcolm Jenkins has already decided. You know, just the promise of this $89 million has him saying, you know what I'm not going to do anymore? Protest the things that are going to continue to go on even even after or as we spend this money. My dude is stupid. Like, now I'm sitting here talking to y'all and reading. Um, <laughs> reading these idiot responses. Apparently, USC has just uh, uh, scored... The flag on the play. Um, let me see what else I got to talk about today because there, there's a lot here on Freestyle Friday. It's still going on, man, Freestyle Friday. Uh, get your thoughts out, man, 404-902-8104. You can text the show. Uh, let me know what it is that you want that you got on the mind. If you want me to rehash a, a subject that I've already uh, breached so far in the show, I've talked about uh, what's going on in the NFL. They've uh, donated $89 million over the next seven years to the Players Co- Coalition. I've also talked about the coaching carousel that's happening right now in college football, uh, the, the 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 crap show that is the University of Tennessee. Uh, the Jer- Derek Jeter, for those of you who believe in hell, uh, Derek Jeter will be there <laughs> for what he did. He fired a, a old ass, a old ass uh, scout that was going through cancer treatment and uh, a kidney transplant. So, <laughs> and he fired while he was in the hospital going through these things, not like as he's going through them or whatever. Nah, he he fired him. Like now, <laughs> while you in the hospital, be you can't ever come back to work. We're going to pack up your stuff and send it to you. Um, I talked about LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball doing what he does, man, and, and treating the, the Los Angeles Lakers, the professional squad, this hallmark organization of the NBA, treating it like it's his son's Chino Hills high school team. I guess he feels like if he continues to ramp up the criticism of the coach, uh, it's going to turn out in his favor and he'll be able to help choose the next one. Maybe, I don't know. You know, uh, he thought that at the high school, that didn't happen. He didn't run the coach off, but then they hired another coach that he didn't like. And then now he said, this is the reason he's pulling his kid out of school. And he's going to homeschool the young boy, the youngest boy. I saw an article today. I didn't read it about the youngest ball kid, the one that's in 11th grade, uh, or I guess I maybe was in 11th grade. Cause he's not in school anymore. Whatever. Um, the youngest one, and I was like, they writing articles about this dude. See, this is why this is why stuff happens like what's happening with the older boy. Cause it would be all right for this kid to struggle. This is just rookie struggling, you know. But the part of the part the reason he can't struggle 
It's because of his dad and all the attention that's not on him. Now they're doing the same thing, and it's going to be probably be double for the young boy. Because if the, if the older boy don't, don't pan out, ain't nobody trying to hear that hype about this young kid. Then it's going to be a lot more critical eyes on him saying, like, you better. Yeah, I'm looking at this kid, Sam Darnold. I'm not sure what people are seeing, and I'm not no trained scout or none of those things, but... I mean, he, he looks he looks small, like not small in, in a short way, uh, not terribly athletic. OK, this was a busted play. I thought he was like on, on the run, like a, like a design quarterback run. But still, his arm don't look that strong. He looks to be, you know, pretty accurate with it, but he's got like a, you know, a, a, a pop gun for an arm. I don't know. Breaking news here. Aaron Boone. For, I think Aaron Boone is a former Yankee. He's been selected as the new. Uh, the new manager for the New York Yankees. So it won't be A-Rod. So shout out to Derek Jeter. He gets to keep his crown. Because like if Derek, if 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 A-Rod goes to the to the Yankees after everything that's been that he's been through or put himself through with the with the Roids and all that kind of stuff and then wins, because mind you now, this team was a couple of outs away <laughs> from being in the World Series this year. So A-Rod goes there and wins with that ball club. Oh yeah. Holla at your boy, man. He got a new king of New York, man. It's not LeBron, and it's damn sure not not Jeter anymore because of what he's done. He's he's come to come to, to Miami or go to gone to Miami, just become the devil, or as Ricky Bobby's mom would say, the devil. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break here. A um, couple of things I want to get to real quick. Tiger Woods um, is a story about Fletcher Cox, man. It's weird as hell. Yeah, I didn't even mention Rick Pitino is suing the University of Louisville. This is how white boys do, man. White boys can do whatever they want to, just like Steve Sarkeesian sued USC. He was the one that was drunk as hell at these at these uh, at these company affairs at practice, and then when they fired him for being drunk at the job, he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sue your ass. Same thing here with Rick Pitino. That man, forty million bucks is what he's suing for breach of contract. I guess his contract didn't explicitly say you can't pay kids to come here <laughs> or you're going to be fired or you can't allow uh broke down, bust down hoes to give up the ass to recruits in the dorm or you can't have sex on the, the restaurant table. You can't have the, the sex on the table of your restaurant with your side chick. Yeah. I guess all those things weren't mentioned explicitly, but yeah. This is this is the world of the, of the rich white man, man. You do what the hell you want to. So I come back. I wrap the show up with. Um, we'll talk about LeBron. We'll talk about a little bit about Thursday night football as well. Fletcher Cox <laughs> is even is even more funny because of the story behind it. And I, I tell you guys what it's all about. Uh, next here on the One Mike with Big Mike show live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, for at least the next couple weeks, man. On Spreaker dot com, the Spreaker app. Tune in iTunes, or I'm on demand on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music. Uh, no live stream tonight, but you guys can still text me at 404-902-8104, 404-902-8104. You can also jump inside my live interactive chat room. That little thought bubble right there, click on it. It'll get you up in here, and we can talk back and forth throughout the show. Uh, you guys can shoot ideas at me, shoot topics at me, uh, correct me when I'm wrong, which I probably have been about 30 or 40 times in tonight's show alone. We do all those things, man. Uh, we've got about another half hour to do it in, so uh, hit me up. I'll be right back. Well, I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one mic. Military life is rewarding, but it isn't always easy. Managing the stress can affect even the strongest warrior. But I can, I will stay mission ready. I can, I will keep my mind and body fit. Talk to my chaplain. Be there to listen. I can, I will. Know the signs. Seek care early. Talk to my health care provider. Be there to help, listen, and get you through this. I can, I will motivate others. Strive for progress, not perfection. I can. I will be there for my buddies, no matter what. Be there for our veterans, no matter what. And I've got your back, too. 
I can, I will. Keep our family safe while you're away. I can, I will. Think of you every night. We're in this together. I got this. I got this. I got this. Take the first step. There's, There's no, no better, better time, time than now. now. Reaching out is a sign of strength. Visit realwarriors.net or call 800-874-2273. And now back to One Mic with Big Mike. And here we go! Yeah, man. Air horn means it's Friday. It's Friday here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. It is also a freestyle Friday, man, where I get you guys in on the action. You guys get to choose the topics, whatever you want to hear me talk about. Whatever you want to discuss, we can go back and forth on it, man. I'm here live via Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app. All you got to do is while you're listening via Spreaker is click that little thought bubble icon. It'll get you right up inside the live interactive chat room. You can also hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, at my Facebook page. They're all the same handle at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Uh did I already mention? 404-902-8104 is my text line as well. I'm sitting here because I forgot to look up look it up earlier. So during the break, <laughs> I went and found like the details uh to this Fletcher Cox story. It is awesome. This the, the writing, the way it's written in this particular article, it just happened to be the one that I, I picked. Um, it's outstandingly and, and immaturely written the way I love it. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles defensive tackle Fletcher Cox is known for penetrating backfields and planting quarterbacks in the grass. But a new lawsuit that accuses Cox <laughs> of stealing a North Carolina man's wife Suggests offensive lines aren't the only thing he likes penetrating. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Filed by 34 year old Joshua Jeffords. The suit says Cox, who was in his sixth season with the NFL's uh, Eagles, had an, adult, had an adulterous affair with Jeffords' 29 year old wife, Catherine. These are two uh, Caucasian people. These are two people of the Caucasian persuasion, in case you're wondering. Uh, uh, Jethro, did I say his name right? Jethro and Catherine, or Jefford and Catherine. Yeah, there are two people of the Caucasian persuasion. Look, man, in the age of Trump, white people ain't taking no L's, man. White men, they're not taking no L's. Like, this, to me, is a total just take the L scenario. Like, if your wife step out and bang a 300-pound defensive tackle, and by the way, Jefford is like a, he's a pretty fit dude. I'm looking at the picture of him. He's not, he's not in Fletcher Cox weight class whatsoever. She looks like the, you know, if you could picture the white girl who was with a black athlete. <laughs> I, I, Cause I, I can't, I can't describe the picture. She's got, she's got long black hair. She's a slim chick. Look like some, um, breasticle implants are in place here. Yeah. But if, if she decides to go that route, and um, let's my man bang. Yeah, I don't know how that's a thing, man. I don't. I don't know how like, you gotta just take the L on it, man. Apparently, there's some laws in 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 South Carolina or in North Carolina, home of the bathroom bill. Let that sink in for a second. Of the original bathroom bill, in which you can sue a man. You can sue a man. Like your wife's side dude, essentially. You can sue him. Oh, they got they got text messages here? <laughs> Apparently, this dude, oh my God. The suit says Cox and Catherine Jeffords uh, began their affair when she took a business trip to Philadelphia. After returning to North Carolina, Jeffords continued the affair with Cox throughout text message and Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat me that. In some of those messages, which were included in the lawsuit, Jeffers called Cox Boo. <laughs> dead giveaway. <laughs> where's my where's my damn um <laughs> That's a dead giveaway to something wrong. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um and wrote that they are sexually compatible. My man. Uh Cox replied he wanted to get her pregnant. Like, damn, <laughs> B <laughs> it's like you just jumped to that, huh? Yeah, man, there's text messages here. This this is from Maxim. If you guys want to go check it out online uh, later. You ain't going to be no damn single mom. I'm just telling you how I feel. Listen to me. I'm listening. Trust me. 
and loving everything you have to say. Exactly. <laughs> just <laughs> this N word is he's on one. Oh man. Mr. Cox's actions have driven that wedge in between the marriage of, 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 of Mr. Jeffords and Mrs. Jeffords and have completely destroyed and ruined their relationship, among other things. <laughs> that big, that big ass dude. Um, here it is. Here's the statute in which this man can sue Fletcher Cox over. In North Carolina, married people can sue for, for alienation of affection. What? Which is what Jeffords is doing here. Still, it's a pretty bad look. Sure, he's hoping to get fifty thousand dollars. See, it sounds bad if I read it. He's he's hoping to get fifty thousand dollars out of Cox. <laughs> so would she. Oh, uh, that's what she said. Um, which is worth the shot, given the laws in North Carolina. But he's also got to consider the downside side of this lawsuit. Now the world knows that a rich fat man. <laughs> That a rich fat man, eight years his junior, stole his wife. That's not exactly something one should be some something one should be eager to publicize. Exactly, you just got to take the L, B. I don't know, maybe fifty grand. I, I don't know if I was in the same position. Maybe I would go for the fifty grand because it's over between me and her. I might as well get something out of the deal. Like I'm all about the petty life, man. So if if the law allows it, even if it's North Carolina and them stupid ass laws that they got, proceed, my homie. I'm I'm Team Jeffords in this one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sure my man Fletcher Cox didn't know what he was getting into. Well, uh, he did know who he was getting into in one sense of the word, but um, in the other sense of the word, nah, he know it was gonna cost him fifty grand. You know, what I mean, he was gonna bang this chick up and leave her, of course, because once you start telling, you got to convince somebody you're not gonna be a single mom. Yeah, bro, you're gonna be a single mom, shout it. <laughs> he just trying, he just trying to take that bag off. That's what that's what's happening there. She making him because she married, right? So she making him bang with a bag on. He like, I'm trying to get this thing raw, dog. <laughs> I want to put a baby in you. You ain't gonna be no single mom. Uh, Fletcher. She knows the stats. <laughs> she knows there's a good chance after you're done playing football, you're gonna be broke, B. Just saying. Those are those are the numbers. Don't don't argue with me. Argue with math. Speaking of numbers, man. <sighs> that boy Tiger Woods. He's back on a golf course. <laughs> yeah, all that all that crazy foolishness, Tiger, Tiger's back. Tiger ain't gonna never be back, man. Like that thing that we saw, that that Haley's comment that we saw, is gone, man. I mean, you can say he's healthy, if he is in fact healthy. He can do what a lot of these golfers do. I talked about it the other day. If 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 Tiger Woods can just play regular golf, you know what Tiger can do? He can he can just show up one day. And find a a course one of, one of these courses that that fit his style. What well, if he got a new style because of the back? His back is apparently fused together. If he's got a new style, a course that fits his style, and win a tournament or two, maybe even a major. Like he hit the leaderboard in this little bitty you know pissant tournament that he's in now. This little rehab tournament that he's in now, and everybody lost their mind. But the the whole idea that Tiger Woods is back it don't mean nothing for nobody else except for the other golfers that make plenty of more money when Tiger Woods is at least playing all with all three, four days of tournaments and not, you know, not bowing out because his back or his knee or whatever is hurting him or whatever he say is hurting him. Those are the only people that matter to me. I'm kind of over the golf thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I enjoyed it at that time. Like I was, I was paying attention to golf a little bit before then because growing up big Michael Jordan fan, I remember hearing Michael Jordan say he loved golf. Because it was the one sport that he knew he never he never conquer. So I started paying attention to it somewhat enough to know the rules, like to know what a birdie is and a eagle is and a par and over par. To know what the terminology is when people are talking to me. And then later on in life, you know, I was I was banging with some white boys at the at the gig at, at the station that I worked at, and I was asking them the difference between the clubs and all this kind of stuff. They were telling me what what like a well, why people would or wouldn't use a, a an iron or wood or ten iron or nine iron and all these things. And then I also I, I got I got a set of clubs real cheap from this estate sale. Somebody was getting a, a divorce or something. And this dude was selling his former brother in law's clubs and I bought them for like hella cheap. Never used them one damn time. Not a one. But I had them for a while. Ended up selling them to somebody else for a little bit of money, a little bit of profit or whatnot. But nah. 
the Tiger Woods thing, I'm, I think I'm good on it. You know, I think I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good to go. Um, wrapping up here, big shout out, man. Shout out, shout, shout out to LeBron, man. Word up. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> Forgot to turn it down. It's gonna be clapping for for minutes. Shout out to LeBron James, man. LeBron James got his uh his school in Akron. Got the go head for his school in Akron. Um, this is what this is what makes it so hard, man. Like LeBron got some ways about him, and I think a lot of it is just being is is his way of being playful. Like some of the petty stuff that that my man is on, like with the Twitter stuff and the social media stuff. But all in all, man, and someone like I mentioned earlier, someone who grew up as a huge, huge fan of, of Michael Jordan, man, I um I, I can't do anything but respect the, the the man who LeBron appears to be. Like I don't know the dude, the dude, of course, but you know, a dude that seems like he loves his wifey, loves his babies, you know, understands, you know, uh, uh, tastes. I ain't gonna say understands his obligation, but feels an obligation uh, to do for people less fortunate than him um the situation with the school man is is big for him he says the biggest thing he's done uh in or out of basketball i think that was the i'm, I'm paraphrasing because i did not i saved the i, I read the article but I, I didn't save it um so yeah man lebron you know shout out to him you know it, it's it's a it's a far cry from you know, the days of my youth and guys like Michael Jordan, who who didn't really even if like people talk about a lot of times Michael Jordan did a lot of stuff in the background. You know what I mean? But I've talked to one of his teammates. I've talked to uh, 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 Craig Hodges about it. And it was times where Craig Hodges was a big, you know, a guy who was out front and wanting to do more, especially for black people. But uh, Michael Jordan went on went, went about that life. You know what I'm saying? So. To see a guy who is the best, and I don't think there's any there's any doubt. Uh, you people might hate LeBron and call people Bron sexuals and all these kind of things, man. But I don't think that there's a guy in the NBA that's better than him in the world. Let's let's just keep it real. He's the best player in the world, and also, man, seems to be a a, a, a cool cat. You know, a guy who 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 uh, wants to do better, wants to make the world a better place uh, when he's gone. I'm sorry, I'm trying to see the most important thing. That's the wording. He says it's the most important thing. Opening the school is the most important thing he's done as a pro. So shout out to him, man. Also, man, uh, they played the Hawks yesterday. If I can kind of do this real quick, man. Um, the Hawks, as anticipated, they're not very good this year. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, like, as it pertains to the teams here in Atlanta, I probably... If I if I were to call myself a fan of the team of a team, I would say the Hawks. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not really a baseball guy. Uh, 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 Falcons fans are freaking annoying, and I don't want to have anything to do with them. I never have ever since I was a kid. But the Hawks, man, the Hawks have always been like this middling team. You know, people sometimes like them, people sometimes don't. But they're, they're, they're a team that I want to do better. They're, they're probably the team out of the three majors here in Atlanta. And of course, now we got a soccer team. But I've always wanted the Hawks to do well. And even with this new, you know, this new regime, and now they're finally doing something that I called for a couple of years ago to go ahead and just tear the thing down and and, and rebuild it. You know what I'm saying? It just, I don't know. I don't want to see highlights of it, though, or the other team's highlights against the Hawks. I don't want to see the score. I'm, I'm starting to take it as really like a personal insult. Every time I see a highlight or a score of the Hawks getting pumped, like LeBron James was so disrespectful yesterday. Like he was showing everybody in the arena just how much better he is than everybody and anybody the Hawks could even hope to put on their squad. He blocks he blocked one dude's shot with his elbow. Like he could have literally like he he did it to prove a point. He spiked this dude's block up uh, this, this dude's shot into the court. He could have caught the basketball. I swear this to be the truth. But he didn't. He spiked it like like a like a volleyball. I'm like, man, how disrespectful you want to be? He did the whole Matambo thing too with the with the finger. This was on a different block, not even this one. It was a different one. We pin pin somebody's junk to the to the backboard. I'm like, come on, man. I know they're gonna be bad. I've asked people on social media, like, who should I be checking out in you know in in in, in college? 
who's going to be the, the, the franchise guy, who's going to be the Ben Simmons, who's going to be the Joel Embiid. By the way, shout out to them dudes, man. Shout out to Joel Embiid, man. You know what I mean? Joel Embiid was brought to my attention when he was at Kansas, and everybody was looking at, um, including myself, was uh, checking out Andrew Wiggins because it was about Andrew Wiggins and, and Jabari, who was going to be number one, number two in the draft. And the dude who was uh, hosting the show, my man, Jason Goff, is I'm telling you, man, you got to check this African dude out, this big man they got at Kansas, uh, Joel B. So I started watching him then. And I was like, damn, this dude is tight. Then he hurt his, what was it, his back or his knee or both. By the end of the season, he was hurt. And then it carried on into the into the pros, and we hadn't seen him really until this year, man. And what we're seeing out of Joel Embiid is ridiculous. And I think he got uh, Greg Monroe tomorrow. They've been kind of going back and forth on social media. Uh, it should be a good one. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching some some decent basketball tomorrow. Of course, not from the Atlanta Hawks, not from the home team. Of course, everybody's hurt too. They got like two or three people hurt on the team. It's just like, ugh, God, it's just garbage. Um, Speaking of those Cavs, an article came out today that LeBron, um, he was kind of baffled a little bit, I guess is the word, baffled, that his teammates weren't feeling uh, Dwayne Wade joining the team. And, that you know, that's to be accepted, man, because you know he's going to show his man uh, a much more preference. It, it started from the time the signing happened, as a matter of fact. And then Dwayne Wade took uh, uh, J.R. Smith's starting job, you know what I'm saying? And J.R. was just like, all right, okay, cool, whatever. And then... The, the story ended up being Dwayne Wade wants to go to the bench. Okay. Dwayne Wade can't shoot the basketball. You know what I'm saying? With any with any range. And that doesn't work on the court with LeBron. So he needed so Tyron Lou needed him. We'll we'll save you some face, B. We'll let you tell people it was your idea. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not gonna be the one like if I'm Tyron Lou, I'm not gonna be the one to go tell LeBron I'm benching your boy. LeBron going to be like, hell you say, uh, head coach number three, where are you? <laughs> Who else on this bench that can scoot over a seat? Because, of course, that's how Ty Lue got his gig. They been, they won like 10 in a row, right? Cleveland won like 10 in a row, so they on their way up. Uh, anybody heard from Derrick Rose, though? Still looking for D-Rose. They're looking for Isaiah Thomas to come back uh, uh, sometime at the middle of this month. So we'll get to see that whole amalgamation of players with – with 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 uh, 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 it, Bron, uh, I don't know if Tristan Thompson's still out or not. I hadn't seen him play in a while. Kevin Love, uh, Jr. We get to see that whole thing come together, and then we get the chance to, you know, see what it's going to look like moving forward as we move forward to the move towards the All Star break, and then uh, down the stretch as we head to the playoffs. Because really, everybody's looking at the same thing in the East, right? Looking at seeing LeBron and the Cavs face off in the finals against Kyrie. And the Celtics, and let the and let the chips fall where they may. Hopefully, everybody will be healthy. Of course, Gordon Hayward went out in the first five whatever minutes of the game, uh, game one. So you know he's no longer a part of that equation. But yeah, everybody's looking forward to to seeing that. Um, last thing, oh, yeah, kind of last thing. Um, watching my, uh, Thursday night football last night. I didn't mean to watch it. But I, I said something on Twitter or on social media that made me need to continue to watch it. Um, when Dallas jumped out on, on Washington, Dallas beat Washington like 38-14 to 14 last night. And they jumped out on them. Uh, they got a kick, a, a punt return by the little white boy. Punt return they got. And I was like, what's the odds that they still lose this damn game? Because Kurt Warner's playing. I'm Kurt Warner. Hmm. Kurt Cousins playing some decent uh, football. I looked. I was looking today, and well, I wasn't looking for it, but it just kind of jumped out at me. That dude was the second-rated passer in the league to Tom Brady. Crazy that as crazy as that sounds with those wide receivers and that team and the whole. I think at, at some point yesterday during the game, people were their, their offensive line was so banged up they were playing with all like five guards. That's ridiculous for one. Um, but a couple things I got out of this game. They 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 got beat pretty bad, and I watched it only because I felt like there was a chance they would blow the lead. Uh, maybe it's just me living in Atlanta. I have that feeling about everybody. But Dak Prescott, you know, people say winning is the greatest deodorant, but here's the real deal. I didn't see anything out of Dak Prescott last night. He threw for 100 yards and two touchdowns, and one of the touchdowns was like just a jump ball to Des Bryant, and people want to say, now nah, Des Bryant is back. Well, you can't make no living off of that, just doing that. Because, first of all, they did the right thing. I'll say this. And not having Dez line up on Josh Norman play in and play out. You know what I mean? Put him on that other dude, 26 or whatever, 
and let them go to work. But the other thing is Alfred Morris, man, that offensive line, they they imposed their will, and Alfred Morris got off for 100-something-plus yards. At the time I stopped watching, it was 100-something yards. So, yeah, you know, that's the formula, but still yet, man, Dak Prescott. Yeah, J-A-G, man, he's just a guy. You know, and it, it don't – it, it didn't warm my heart to say it, but it's it's true. I can only go by what I'm seeing. And a lot of things got disguised by, by Ezekiel Elliott, that offensive line. A lot of things got disguised. He was able to go, you know, third and short and hit like an eight-yard eight, eight yard pass and then, you know, move the chain, move the chain, move the chain. But now the NFL wants you to play NFL quarterback, man. And NFL quarterbacks take shots down the field, man. And if, if Terrence Williams, Des Bryant aren't the guys that are going to get – the proper amount of 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 separation for you. The Falcons got to go shop. Not the Falcons, sorry. Cowboys got to go shopping, you know, and figure it out. Um, and finally, last thing before I get out of here for the night, appreciate you guys hanging hang, hanging in with me on a uh, Freestyle Friday. Gomer Powell died, man. The dude that played Gomer Powell died, and as, and after his death, first of all, didn't know he was still alive. He's not now, but didn't know at the time before he died he was still alive. But he's dead now. And homie, um, one, he was gay. Didn't know that. Um, second thing I learned today, that Big Dog was the voice, not of NASCAR. I thought it was NASCAR. And I put something on my Facebook about uh, whether or not Wonder if he likes black people or something like that. Because <laughs> I thought it was NASCAR. But it's IndyCar. He was the voice of IndyCar. And I guess those are the little ones, right? The, the fast little, ring, those. Didn't know that. My man was 87 years old, um, gay just recently, not recently, recently, but like as the, the laws change for, oh, that boy tried to break Sam Darnold hip. Oh, that like it hurt. Anyway, yeah, just recently married his partner of a bunch of bunch of years. Got to this conversation yesterday. And these conversations tend to happen with people so often, man. Like, you know, I, I, I bang for gay people, man. You know what I'm saying? And they're right to be people and to be looked at as people. And so many people will find an excuse that they shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the conversation I had was about, that me and another guy were having about, like, how just, how shameful it is that in America, like, people have to hide, you know, hide their, who they are out of fear, out of the fear of, of something being done to them, either by the government or by, by these loonies, these, these religious loon bags who like to go out and kill and beat up gay people and all this kind of stuff. And some dudes, his comment was, you shouldn't do stuff if you're ashamed to do it. I'm like, okay, there it is. <laughs> Homophobia in a nutshell. You shouldn't do it if you're ashamed to do it without without looking inward, I guess, at this point. Looking inward and saying, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be such a jerk to people because some chick likes another chick or some dude likes another dude. People, no, I'm gonna stop saying people are weird. I'm the weird one because there's more people who think like that than think like I do. Just like human beings are human beings. If you're if you're a terrible human being, you can be a terrible human being and be gay, or you can be a terrible human being and be gay and be straight. But at the end of the day, man, people should be treated as humans and their their, their character, not to be too you know Martin Luther Kingy, their character should be what you know what regulates how you treat them. Somebody's an a-hole, you treat them like an a-hole. Regardless of if they're gay or straight, you treat them like an a-hole. But if somebody's a cool person, I don't care who you who you lay down with, who you married to, you a cool person. There, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a shortage of those people, those type of people in this world. You shouldn't exclude them, exclude them because of what, what sexual preference or uh, sexual orientation and all these uh, stupid things, race and all these things. They all go into one big ball of wax, man. Anyway, man, I'm going to get out of here and watch some of this football game. I think Stanford and uh, USC are tied 7-7 seven seven right now. I saw Bryce Love walk into the end zone. So it looks to be a pretty good championship game, good start to championship weekend in college football. We'll come back on Monday and talk about everything that happened. I'm going to try to get my man Bill Bender from the Sporting News on Monday. I forgot to hit him up so we could talk about how all this stuff is playing out because the results and the the rating or the, the ranking show is going to be on Sunday this week at noon on ESPN if you want to check that out. Um, as far as I go, man, appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all who have listened to the show for the last couple of years or whatever. We'll do all this later on, man, because I got a couple weeks to go before I, before I, I shut this thing down, man. 
But it is the one Mike with Big Mike show. Don't forget over the weekend, man. I, I'm I'm still here on demand on Spreaker, the Spreaker app. Tune in one Mike with Big Mike.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and YouTube. You can follow me, uh, like my page, and all those things at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Oh, and remember, all you need is one mic. <laughs>